Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to the bright side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on the bright side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedures procedure because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, skin health questions, something you may have heard about or read about in the news or on the internet or you heard from a friend, we can help clear it up, clear up any confusion. 844-236-6010 and nutrition can be a very confusing subject. Health can be a very confusing subject. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head over to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase Longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the website as well. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a Longevity business and join me in my mission to help educate the world about the power and the importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. And they can give you the whole scoop for one time $25 fee. You can start yourself a business. If you're entrepreneurially minded, if you're a business person, if you want to start a business with little or no investment or infrastructure, longevity is something that you want to think about. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, if you're dealing with accelerated aging of the skin, if you want to prevent aging of the skin, or if you have acne blemishes or dark spots, retinol is your go-to active ingredient. There is no active ingredient on the planet that is more effective than retinol, especially at a 5% concentration. And in our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, you will get no preservatives, no fragrances, no fillers, no waxes, no emulsifiers, no silicon, no propylene glycol water, no vegetable oils, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products, and that includes our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, as well as our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. They're all formulated to last months. Our Truth Retinol 5% Gel can last up to, heck, I've had people who've been using it for over a year. One jar can last you over a year, and it is powerful and effective. If you're looking to exfoliate, if you're looking for peeling, if you're looking to get rid of dark spots, Retinol 5% Gel is your go-to topical skincare product. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. On our last program, we were talking about protection from estrogen, the so-called female hormone, which is much more than a female hormone. Estrogen amplifies the stress response. Estrogen is a growth hormone, a growth substance. Estrogen is linked to a whole host of chronic degenerative diseases, including female health issues, prostate disease, PMS, infertility, autoimmunity, fibrosis, sclerosis, cancer. We said vitamin E is anti-estrogen and anyone dealing with estrogen issues should consider a daily dose of 400 international units of vitamin E, preferably 
in its mixed tocopherol or mixed tocotrienol forms. Vitamin E is protective against heart disease. In fact, that's probably its claim to fame. It's important for the entire vascular system. It's the master antioxidant. It's hard to say enough good things about vitamin E. Later on, we're going to talk about vitamin E, uh, about the importance of vitamin E for insulin management. Vitamin E is anti-diabetic, and it's especially important for preg pregnant women uh, who are concerned about gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes, which is diabetes that occurs in the latter stages of pregnancy, and insulin toxicity, which is also an issue for pregnant women. This can be a serious problem for the developing fetus. And there are actually some researchers who believe that insulin toxicity in the womb may be linked to autism disorders. We'll be talking about this uh, probably in the next few days. And this is why vitamin E can be so helpful for pregnant women. But for now, I want to continue talking about the polyphenols. Most folks have not heard yet about the polyphenols. You, uh, you will hear more and more about the polyphenols. Certainly, we've heard about types of polyphenols like resveratrol and, and uh, lignans and curcum curcumin. We'll be talking about all these in the coming days. The polyphenols are a class of plant chemicals that are similar to estrogen, and this similarity to estrogen allows them to be protective against estrogen. They're said to be weak estrogens, and they protect the body from more toxic estrogens. The more toxic estrogens that are found in drugs, the more toxic estrogens that are found in plastics, the more toxic estrogens that are found in meat and dairy and poultry, and the more toxic estrogens that are produced as byproducts or as metabolites, the so-called catechol estrogens. So these weak estrogens, as opposed to the strong toxic estrogens, have protective effects. And the polyphenols are classic examples of weak estrogens. We were talking yesterday about one of the most important of these polyphenols, these weak estrogenic compounds called lignins, L-I-G-N-I-N-S, which are found in flax seeds and flaxseed oil. And this is one reason why anyone dealing with estrogenic health issues should be grinding up flax seeds every day and drinking them down in water or making what I call a flaxseed pudding with with uh, almond milk and maybe mixing a little water. You could put a touch of stevia in there if you want to get a little sweetness. You can get creative. It's really delicious. And it's a great way to get your flax seeds. Always grind your flax seeds, though, because the, the flax shell, the flax seed shell, makes it very difficult to access the nutrients within. And most people will just pass the flax seed through their bowels and not get any of the benefit if you don't grind them up. And don't buy the pre-ground stuff, either. That stuff's a major ripoff. And not only is it a ripoff, it also goes... Uh, uh, flax seeds become unstable very quickly, especially the oils in the unstable in the uh, in the flax seeds. So, grind your flax seeds up fresh. They're pretty darn cheap. They cost you two dollars a pound. Get a coffee grinder and grind them up fresh every day, especially if you're dealing with any estrogenic health issues, autoimmunity, PMS. The same thing is true if you have a, if you're a guy with prostate disease, men with BPH or other prostate health issues will benefit from flax seeds, according to the national uh, according to the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Eating flax seeds can help men dealing with prostate cancer, and there is evidence that flax seeds can lower PSA levels. And the power of lignans and the power of flax does not stop at the prostate, and it has a lot more to do with health than just protection from estrogen. Reading from a 2015 article, this is a meta study, which is a study of other studies in Nutrition Journal, one of my favorite peer-reviewed scientific journals. A particular type of lignin found in flax called SDG, or if you prefer, secoisolarisi resinol diglucoside, say that 10 times fast, secoisolarisi resinol diglucoside, I'm going to call it SDG. SDG interferes with the development of diseases of the heart, the vascular system, lupus, diseases of the kidney, bone, reproductive system. SDG is protective against menopausal symptoms, mental stress, anxiety, immunity. This is a lot of upside, folks. We're talking here flax seeds at $2 a pound are protective against cardiovascular disease, autoimmunity, kidney disease, bone, reproductive system via this lignin called SDG. Perhaps this is why the Latin name for flax seeds is linum usitatissimum, usitatissim, which means thread that is very useful. And indeed, flax seeds are very useful, certainly when it comes to health. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. All right, we 
are back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. You can also get our blog and news stories at benfuchsarch or at uh, well, BenFuchsArchives.com, BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, and CriticalHealthNews.com. You can purchase longevity products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off of the websites as well. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, you want to go to TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com. Also have a skincare blog at TruthTreatments.com. And also want to encourage you to check out my Truth Facebook page, The Truth with Ben. We've got a blog, blog posts up there. And we also do specials on Truth products, on Truth Treatment products at uh, The Truth with Ben. My, my uh, Truth Facebook page, if you've tried to friend me on my personal Facebook, Facebook page. I don't really check that too often. And if you sent me a message on my personal uh, Facebook page, please don't uh, be offended that I haven't replied because I hardly ever check that. But if you go to Truth, The Truth with Ben, uh, that's my Truth Facebook page. I do respond to messages there. And also we've got a blog and, a blog and news stories up at The Truth with Ben. That's, uh, that's on Facebook. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number today on the Bright Side. We do have lines open for you if you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, estrogen, polyphenols, flax seeds, vitamin E, or anything, really. Common success story. I love hearing from you guys. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking about linum usitatissimum. That's a, that's a mouthful. Linum usitatissimum, which means thread that is very useful in Latin. This is where we get the word linen from, which was historically derived from flax, and very useful as an understatement when it comes to this stuff. It is absolutely mind-blowingly amazing. SDG, one of the compounds in flax, a type of lignin, is important for helping deal with insulin resistance and prostate health issues and reproductive health issues and mental stresses, anxiety, anti-inflammatory issues, antioxidant issues. It's neuroprotective. According to a paper that was published in 2015 in uh, Nutrition Journal, the journal Nutrition Journal, researchers showed that SDG, quote, has shown therapeutic potential against a number of human diseases and can be recommended for the discerning consumer, unquote. Now you can, you probably will start to see SDG um, supplements. You don't need an SDG supplement. Just get yourself some flax seeds for $2 a pound. Go for the golden flax seeds. Uh, those tend to be a little bit more nutritionally valuable than the brown flax seeds. Either way, flax seeds are absolutely awesome. And they're not just awesome biochemically. They're not just awesome for their chemistry. They have a mechanical value in the sense that they act like a broom that can sweep out toxins from the body. If you're on prescription drugs, they can help sweep out prescription drugs. And of course, they definitely help sweep out excess estrogen and estrogen breakdown products, estrogen metabolites, so-called catechol estrogens, from the intestine and out of the body. They improve bowel movements if you're dealing with constipation. Flaxseed fiber can help improve bowel movements. The fiber can support detoxification by helping support the bile system. Bile is, in my opinion, a very, very underappreciated fluid. If you have any bile issues plus you're on prescription drugs, this is a recipe for disaster. If you had a gallbladder removed and you're on prescription drugs, a recipe for disaster. And I know there's a lot of you guys who have had your gallbladders removed and now you're on prescription drugs. I'm telling you, without an effective bile, bile system, you're just playing with fire. If you have any estrogenic health issues, work on your bile, support bile, and file, uh, flaxseed can do that. Flaxseed also supports the health of the microbiome. Flaxseed, acts as, flaxseed fiber acts as a prebiotic. Prebiotics help feed probiotics. Prebiotics act to nurture and sustain probiotics. Prebiotics and fiber 
act to feed probiotics to make sure that the microbiome is healthy, and that too can support estrogen clearance, and that too can support drug clearance as well. Having a healthy microbiome is the fundamental, the absolute key to staying healthy, having a healthy microbiome. Now, certainly taking probiotics is going to be important. Eating fermented food is going to be important, but you got to have a good environment in the intestine for the probiotics and the microbiome to live and to thrive, and that's where flaxseed fiber comes in. Flaxseeds are also a great source of vitamin E. Both the tocopherol and the tocotrienol form, all eight forms of vitamin E are found in some degree in flaxseeds, and you'll get a significant dose of protein. Up to 30% of your flaxseed fiber is going to be made up of protein. That means ground up flaxseeds can be thought of as a type of protein powder supplement. So not only are you getting fiber when you grind up your flax seeds, now you got yourself a protein supplement and a protein supplement that has all of these other multiple benefits. It's not like a perfect protein supplement because it doesn't have everything that you need, but it's got a lot of protein in it. As I say, up to 30%, up to a third of your flax seeds is going to be protein and a vegan-friendly protein if you're a vegan and an inexpensive protein. Where are you going to get a protein for $2 a pound? Let's see here, do the math here. If you're paying $2 a pound for something that's 30% protein, that means you're paying about 70 cents for your protein. That's amazing, for 30 grams of protein, 70 cents. Or no, that's a pound. Oh my goodness, that is like hundreds of grams of protein. What's 30% of, that's 120 grams, 130 grams of protein for 70 cents. Where are you gonna get that? You're talking a quarter pound of protein or a third of a pound of protein. And they don't have all the amino acids, so they're not perfect proteins, certainly. Flax seeds aren't. They're missing lysine. Lysine is one of the more important proteins for building collagen. Collagen's made up of lysine, but they got a lot of arginine, and arginine is a stupendously valuable amino acid. I call arginine super amino acid because it's got four nitrogens. It's mega building. Super important for the heart, important for the brain, important for blood sugar. Arginine stimulates growth hormone. Flax seeds also contain glutamine, maybe, arguably anyway, the most important of the amino acids, the most abundant of the amino acids. Both arginine and glutamine are important for building things. They're bodybuilding proteins, or bodybuilding amino acids, I should say. That makes flaxseed a bodybuilder, a bodybuilding substance, and a youth-promoting substance, and a detoxifying substance. And you want more? How much more can we get here? Flax seeds are a great source of omega-3 fatty acids, also important for prostate health, also important for cardiovascular health, also important to balance out all of the omega-6s that we get from corn and from soy and uh, the standard vegetable oils that most of us eat. And there's more, thiamine for blood sugar, manganese, magnesium, and potassium, and you also get selenium and zinc in flax seeds, which are super important for the prostate. Selenium is important, and zinc are important for blood sugar too. How much benefit do you want from one food? I would say flax seeds are the ultimate superfood, except there's lots of other superfoods, so they're one of the ultimate superfoods, especially for the prostate and the male reproductive system, and for estrogen, and for diabetes. I use flaxseed every day personally, and if you're diabetic, you should use flax seeds every day. Flaxseed fiber, especially after meals, the fiber can mop up the excess sugar and all the wonderful nutrients in the flaxseed can help support insulin and ha can help support blood sugar control and can help keep your blood sugar stable. And then on top of that, you got the lignans for balancing out estrogen. Lignans, by the way, are found in all plants. They're not just found in flax seeds, although flax seeds do have probably, I don't know of any plants that have more lignans than flax seeds. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're coming back with your phone calls. We do have lines open for you, by the way, 844-236-6010. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication. Look. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We have lines open for you, and we'll get your calls here momentarily, so hang on. If you're on hold, a couple things I want to, a couple stories I want to read to you. From the journal Nature Communications, this is uh, from the University of Sydney in Australia. Boosting natural brain opioids may be a better way to treat anxiety. I love this idea that we make our own Valium. We make our own anti-anxiety medicine. Brain has an amazing way of coping with stress. 
interestingly, the more Valium you, Valium you take or the more anti-anxiety medicine you take or benzos, Xanax or whatever it is you're taking in terms of anxiety, the less of these natural brain opioids you will make. Body has, uh, the brain has compounds called encephalons or encephalons, which are natural anti-anxiety anti agents. Brain also makes natural pain relievers, and this is something we haven't really known about for, oh, probably about the well, first discovered, I think, in the 1990s or the late 1980s. There's a really cool book by a lady named Candace Pert who was working at the National Institute of Health. It's called The Molecules of Emotion. We didn't know about this when I was in pharmacy school. Actually, we were just kind of just beginning to understand that the brain makes makes these natural anti-anxiety and pain relieving peptides. A lot of these pain relieving compounds, by the way, or similar uh, pain relieving compounds are found in so-called comfort foods, especially grains and also to a certain extent dairy. This may be one reason why we're addicted to these kinds of foods because of their natural or their uh, uh, similar to the kind of natural opiates. They're called exorphins as opposed to endorphins. Endorphins are found inside the body. Exorphins are found outside the body. And it turns out that grains and to a certain extent dairy are sources of these exorphins and thus the term comfort foods. All right. Let's see if there's anything else here. I want to read you. Oh, here's a good one. This is from the Journal of Physiology, Gastrointestinal and Liver Physiology. Cholesterol drugs shown to reduce inflammation in patients. Now, this is very interesting. They're using now statin drugs to, uh, as anti-inflammatories or they're exploring the use of statin drugs as anti-inflammatories according to this uh, According to this article, uh, statin drugs, a new review of 50 studies, in a review of 50 studies, this is a meta study, a study of other studies, researchers cite reductions in liver inflammation and improvements in other inflammatory inflammation related factors to show why statins make good candidates for treating liver disease. Doctors are fascinated with suppressing inflammation or the medical community is fascinated with suppressing inflammation by suppressing cholesterol production with statin drugs. Here's the problem. Inflammation is a good thing. Inflammation is a protective response. You don't want to suppress a protective response. That doesn't make any sense. Cholesterol is involved in inflammation not as a bad thing. Cholesterol is involved in the inflammatory response because it's protective. And suppressing cholesterol is never a good thing. Even the researchers who cited uh, all these other studies that talk about anti-inflammatory properties of statins uh, admit quote, statin drugs can contribute to liver damage in some people. But then they go on to say, but for people with advanced liver diseases, statins are cost effective and well tolerated and the benefits outweigh their potential hepatotoxic, that is liver toxic risk. I'm not buying it. The fact of the matter is, is if you have inflammatory liver disease, it's none of the doctor's business. It's not a medical concern. It's a lifestyle concern. It means bad living, not beating anybody up here, I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm not trying to be mean-spirited. I'm just trying to keep it real. Just trying to be honest. If you have a liver problem, it is not a medical concern. If you have a liver problem, it's a lifestyle concern. The liver processes all the things that we do in our lives. Drugs, cigarettes, alcohol, bad food. Thus, if you have liver disease, the first thing you want to think about, well, a lot of, well, the first thing you want to think about is the digestive system, the first point on the triangle of disease. The next thing you want to think about is the blood sugar system, the second point on the triangle of disease, and certainly eliminating toxicity coming from prescription drugs as well as anything else, alcohol, cigarettes, or illegal drugs, is also something you want to think about if you're dealing with liver disease. And by the way, the flavonoids, which we're going to talk about here in the next few days, which are examples of polyphenol substances, are also wonderfully protective, including the flavonoids, which are found in my Bergamax product, which you'll find on brightsidehealth.com. Bergamax is wonderfully protective against liver disease, and there's a lot of liver literature that shows that bergamot, bergamot, bergamot flavonoids are incredibly protective for the liver as well as for other systems in the body. You can find Bergamax at brightsidehealth.com, as well as our vegan protein and uh, vegan protein powder and coconut powder and CBD oil and a bunch of other good stuff at uh, brightsidehealth.com, brightsidehealth.com. Okay, time to hit the phones, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to my friend Dave in Michigan. There he is. Dave, what's going on, buddy? Hey, Ben, how you doing? 
Good morning. Good to talk to you, Dave. Good morning. Good to talk to you. It was such a pleasure meeting you in Indiana. You are so you're so awesome on the uh, you know on the air, but in person, oh my God, people, you have you. got to get to an event where Ben is at. He is. Thank you. You're the best, Ben. Uh, we Thank love you, you so much. You have taught us so much. It's I appreciate it's just that, Dave. Thank invaluable. you. Invaluable. What you've taught me over the years, I love your show, and I feel empty when I miss it. Oh my goodness, um, my head is getting too big. You gotta stop now. <laughs> no, thank you. True, I appreciate. It. I'm not. I'm I appreciate not trying it. to pump you up at all. You are great, and uh, you're you, good Dave. at what you do. Thank you so much. So, thank you. People have been telling us, uh, hey, you, we can't take this uh, beyond osteo FX liquid. The, the ratio between the calcium and the magnesium is all wrong. The balance is all wrong. Can you set us straight there, please? Mm, no, you, you don't necessarily have to worry about the balance. I think there's a little bit more. Mag is there more magnesium than calcium? Is that the idea? No, I think there's more calcium than magnesium. No. But isn't that the way it's supposed to be? It's supposed to be that way, but yeah. it's hard to know what the rate. There's no ratio. It's, it's hard to know what that ratio is. You need calcium. You need magnesium. If you find yourself getting constipated, you probably need more magnesium. If you find your stools are a little bit loose, you need more calcium, but there's no real ratio to these things. You need calcium, you need magnesium. Magnesium is very, very underappreciated, although if you're listening to this program, we, and if you listen to Doc, Doc talks about magnesium a lot, and I talk about magnesium a lot, but in the lay, in, among lay people and even among the medical community, calcium is much more overrated than magnesium is. Magnesium deficiency is a way more significant problem, in my opinion, than calcium deficiency is. We get calcium from dairy products, and most of us are getting a lot of dairy. Magnesium is found in green leafy vegetables, and people don't eat green leafy vegetables. Most people are eating a lot more dairy or ingesting a lot more dairy than they are green leafy vegetables. Magnesium deficiency is considered to be the number one mineral deficiency, and the list of benefits that you get from magnesium is endless. Magnesium is a relaxing substance. Calcium is a contracting substance. This is where the balance, the idea of balance comes in, because one contracts and one one's responsible for contraction. Calcium is, and uh, magnesium is responsible for relaxation. The body is constantly contracting and relaxing. The muscles are con contracting and relaxing. And so you need to have a balance of contraction and, relax and relaxation. Calcium is, I'm not underestimating, or I don't mean to marginalize the importance of calcium. It's probably the most important of all the minerals, at least from a biological substance. Hard to say that because they're all important. But magnesium deficiency is much more a significant health challenge than calcium. If you're dealing with cardiovascular health issues, please get yourself on magnesium. If you're dealing with di uh, digestive health issues, especially constipation, please get yourself on magnesium. The best way to get your magnesium, though, folks, is not in a supplement. It's in your veggies. Make sure you're eating your veggies and then supplementing your veggies with, uh, with uh, the osteo effects or a good magnesium supplement. That's the idea of a supplement. It supplements food. Dave, I'm going to let you go. Thank you for the kind words. I appreciate that, and I hope we helped you out. Have a beautiful day, buddy, and say hi to water. the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Got lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. Let's go. To, oh, shoot. I just dropped you. Hey, Wes, call back. I'm sorry. I hit the wrong button. Wes, call back. I'll get you right up. I apologize for that. Steve in Virginia, welcome to the bright side. Hello, Ben. Hello, Steve. Good morning. <laughs> Yes, I uh, was just wondering for someone trying to get away from the you know the artificial uh, blood thinners. What what are just a couple of good uh, alternatives? The natural uh, approach. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Blood thinning. Listen, blood. The control of the blood is extremely important. There's nothing more important to the body than the blood. The blood is the life. We always talk about all diseases, cell disease, but all cell disease is preceded by dirty blood. You got to make sure the blood is clean and the body regulates the blood and the flow of the blood super, super closely. There's dozens of different steps that are involved in blood clotting. And if your blood is clotting inappropriately, that is a major concern. 
and to uh, the reason why blood thinning drugs are so toxic is because you're trying to override one of the body, maybe the most important biochemical mechanism in the entire in the body. And so blood thinning drugs are ridiculously toxic. In a, you know, all drugs have a certain amount of toxicity, but it's hard to say. There's, aside from chemotherapy and methotrexate, I, I'd have to say nothing is more toxic than the blood thinning drugs. On the other hand, there are wonderful nutrients that can help thin the blood. And I'm going to give you some of them, but I want you to understand, Steve, and everybody listening on blood thinners, if your blood is clotting, your main goal is to figure out why, not to nutriate it away or not to drug it away, but to figure out why the blood is clotting. Blood clotting is a sign that the body does not want the blood delivered. So you say, why would the body not want the blood delivered? Because it's toxic. Blood clots under, condition, under conditions of toxicity and emergency. Blood clotting is also a way that the body keeps you from hemorrhaging to death if you get eaten by a tiger. So between toxicity and the emergency response system, you have the main reasons for blood clotting. Let me say that again because it's so important. And you can tell us to your doctor. The main reason why the blood clots is because it's toxic or because the body is in, in an emergency posture. It's trying to save you from bleeding to death. That's why they give you blood thinners when you come out of surgery. Because after you have surgery, that represents a major, major stress on the body. The body doesn't know it was in an operating room. It thinks it's on the African savanna and a tiger just bit its leg off. So the body clot, the blood clots, or the body clots the blood. So blood thinning represents toxicity and emergency. Your major goal, if, you have, if you're on blood thinners, is to f try to figure out what's the emergency and what's the toxicity? The emergency can be psychological, or it can be a, a, a sugar toxicity. It could be toxicity that's coming in through the digestive, or, or sugar stress, I should say. Or it could be toxicity that's coming in through the digestive system. That's where you want to work, with foods, with sugar, and with any psychological stressors that are occurring. Even something like deep breathing slowly can help thin the blood. All the, all the ways we talk about activating the parasympathetic nervous system will help thin the blood. However, to answer your question, and also digest, working on the digestive system too. But to answer your question, there are numerous things that you can, numerous supplements that you can take to, th to thin the blood. Primarily, or, or most importantly, is vitamin E and the omega-3 fatty acids. Use foods that contain vitamin E and the omega-3 fatty acids. We've been talking about flaxseed oil and flax seeds. That can work. Uh, vitamin E, 400 international units a day, omega-3 fatty acids. Another problem is in uh, the ingestion of toxic omega-6 oils. That can clot the blood. So maybe Making sure you're getting enough omega-3 fats, use your ultimate EFAs. Omega-3 fats, or, or vitamin E, I should say, is so powerful as a blood thinner that uh, even your doctor will tell you not to use, uh, not to use vitamin E pre-surgery because he's concerned that you might bleed too much. So the, the medical community is well aware of vitamin E's blood thinning properties, which they consider to be a bad thing. Other uh, nutrients of note that can help thin the blood, garlic is another really neat way to thin the blood. I love garlic as a nutritional as a nutritional food. Garlic is actually a blood thinning, or actually a superfood. We talked earlier about flax being a superfood. Garlic qualifies as a superfood. Um, so you, may, you can use garlic supplements, or you can use, um, you can use uh, a garlic pill, uh, gar uh, real garlic. If you're going to use real garlic, by the way, you always want to crush it up a little bit. Crushing up garlic activates the, uh, the enzymes and the active ingredients in garlic. Uh, also, uh, uh, polysaccharides can have a blood thinning effect. Things like Fucoidin Z, high hyaluronic acid, glucosamine. Don't underestimate the importance of glucosamine either for the vascular system. Everybody knows about glucosamine for, uh, uh, for building cartilage and for arthritis, but it also has a wonderful effect on the blood, wonderful blood thinning effect, and also has a, a, a nice effect on the vascular system as well. So there's some, some nutritional strategies for you, Steve, but I don't want to mislead anybody into thinking that blood thinning is a medicinal, uh, is a, uh, involves medicinal strategies, whether those medicinal strategies are drug medicines or nutritional medicines, of course, nutritional medicines are going to be better, but uh, um, you, you don't want to focus on treating, you want to focus on eliminating the problem in the 
first place. You see the distinction I'm making, Steve? There's a yeah. there's a treatment strategy, and then there's eliminating the problem in the first place strategy. I believe in eliminating the problem in the first place. By the way, uh, aspirin is a wonderful blood thinner, as most people know, but also white willow, which is an herb that contains something similar to aspirin, salicylic acid, or salicylate, I should say, uh, that can have a blood thinning effect also. So you might want to consider using a little white willow herb. Also, hawthorn, hawthorn berry oh. sometimes helps folks too. Yeah. All right, okay. Steve, I'm going to let you go. I want to get to my friend Wes, who I accidentally hung up on. Say hi okay. to Rose for me. Have a beautiful uh-huh. day, buddy. Oh, All right, take care, you. man. All right, uh, Wes in Idaho. Sorry for hanging up on you there, my friend. What's going on? Greetings, Ben. What Greetings. is the pH of urine, blood, and saliva supposed to be? Uh, it depends on the time of day on the urine. And uh, it depends on how healthy you are or how not healthy you are on the uh, blood. In fact, blood pH, well, here, let me set, let's talk a little bit about pH. First of all, uh, pH is a measurement of how toxic you are. And everybody, or people who understand health know that. However, you can't resolve pH problems by using supplements or by using foods because pH is a sign that the body is breaking down. P, uh, low pH or acidity is a sign that the body is breaking down, specifically that cells are breaking down. So uh, you, the way you take care of your pH is by figuring out why your cells are breaking down, why you're, why you're toxic, why cells aren't getting fed or why cells aren't getting oxygenated or why cells are accumulating toxicity and that always involves the blood and that always involves the blood sugar system and the digestive system. Oxygen is the best way, as I've said so many times, is the way nature intended us to manipulate our pH. Now, you can do uh, urine tests and saliva tests uh, for, um, for, uh, for measuring what your pH is, but it's all really about the blood pH. It's not about the urine pH or the saliva pH primarily because they reflect the blood pH. Do you follow me there, Wesley? Yeah, blood, It's about the blood, blood pH. The sal- Blood, blood has to be at 7 point, 7 point, let me just say this real quick. Blood has to be kept at a pH of 7.38. It's very tightly controlled. If it goes to 7.39 or 7.37, you're in big trouble. That's how tightly controlled, not big trouble, but, but you'll start to exhibit signs. You're not in big trouble at that, at that stage. But if it goes too low you can, or too high, you can be in big trouble. But the blood, is tightly, blood pH is tightly regulated between 7.38 and, or at 7.38. Ideal saliva uh, pH and urine pH is somewhere in that area between 7 point, uh, 7.1 and 7.4, let's say, it's because it's going to reflect your blood pH and it's going to be slightly different because it's going to be metabolized a little bit. So it's not going to be exact, but you want it somewhere between 7.1 and 7.4. If you do a morning saliva test, it's, it might be a little bit more acidic. It might be a little bit lower, maybe under 7, say 6.9 or something. Likewise, with the urine test, it might be a little bit lower. It's like 6.9. If it gets below 6.7 or so, you got a problem. That's where you start to want to be concerned. So the morning urine, say somewhere between 6.7, 6.8, and 7.2 or 7.3, likewise with morning saliva. It's tough to, it's tough to make a judgment call on that, but you're somewhere in that, in that ballpark vicinity, 6.7-ish to 7.2 or 7.3. Now, you can't really get a good assessment with pH paper, though, and that's the problem. pH paper is not that exact. To really do it, you've got to get a pH meter, and you've got to do a, a dilution. Dilution of the of the urine, and you got to do dilution of saliva. So you're not going to really get an exact measurement. So what you want to watch out for is two: if your urine or your saliva is really, really acidic or really, really alkaline. Usually it's really, really acidic. Um, although the exact number, like I say, is 6.7-ish or 6.8-ish, somewhere to 7.2 or 7.3. Hope that helps, Wes. Thank you so much for your call. We're just out of time on the bright side. Thank you so much for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Want to encourage you to check out my Truth Skin Health products at TruthTreatments.com. TruthTreatments.com or Retinol 5%. Truth Serum, Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream, and Truth Bomb, all made with generous amounts of vitamin C, never any preservative, fragrance, filler, wax, emulsifier, surfactant, water, or anything your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our truth treatment products. Thanks for listening. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.